hi how's it going um, so in today's tutorial I'm going to be covering uh, pendants and uh, just showing you how I make some pendants that I make these are um, wooden pendants and I kind of do like a mother daughter or big sister little sister um, combo in this tutorial and I'm using blue purple turquoise and um, white and um, I it's this necklace here this is how one way I use it um, I used some new paints that I got in my Facebook group um, I have some people who have commented on target paints um, target acrylics and I really wanted to try them so I went and got some I didn't get too many because I have so many paints but the ones that I got um, were pretty good actually uh, so anyway this target paint is called handmade modern and I did like it so so I would give it a thumbs up basically also I want to give a shout out to Marie for donating to my channel that was so super sweet of you and so thoughtful you no know, it was just a small gesture that made my day and made me smile so thank you so much and also I want to give a shout out to Nancy Sutherland she is in my um, my Facebook mandala sharing group and Nancy is just the sweetest lady I love her so much I love so many of the women in my group um, Nancy and Helen crack me up all day long uh, but anyway she sent me this uh, Harbor Freight tools transfer punch set and um, the sizes look awesome they look promising but they are a little heavy so um, I will try to do a tutorial using these just to let you know what I think about them and if they're worth buying or not. Anyway, um, if you're ready to go about making a pendant, then let's get started. So I'm going to be doing one larger and one smaller. Now these make the perfect gift, um, especially for the upcoming holiday season. Um, I usually use the smaller ones for the younger um, the younger people and the larger ones for adults uh, but it's just whatever you prefer you may prefer to use smaller ones and that's uh, just a personal preference the, the larger ones are a little bit thicker and the smaller ones are a little bit thinner and I got these at the local craft store I believe this was Hobby Lobby uh, for both of these but you can find them pretty much anywhere and you want to get a, what, about a one inch brush um, Flat brush is really what's important, not necessarily the size. I'm just using some jet black paint from Apple Barrel. And I just like to put a little bit on the end of my brush and then go ahead and grab something to protect your, your table with before you get started with the, uh, the base coats. So I just kind of dab it in the middle and then I want to get the end of the brush covered. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to go, um, close to the edge I'm not going to go all the way to the edge but again you can go all the way to the edge you can you can coat the back it's just whatever you like but for me I'm just going to leave a little bit of a ring of the natural wood showing and I just kind of rotate the piece so um, I'm just eyeballing here but if you want you can go ahead and draw a circle on if you have like a coin or something to that effect, um, lay it down and, and draw a ring if you want a guideline, but I just am going to eyeball it. And then the same for the larger piece. Now I like to kind of dab the paint into the middle and then that way I can spread it as I go. And just kind of place your brush wherever you want your line to be and then just spin the actual, the actual wooden disc itself and then it should just create a uniform um, line there for you all the way around. Just kind of keep spinning it, gather up some paint and kind of push it to the edge and then line up your brush again and then spin your wood circle just like that. And that does take a little bit of practice, but it's not too complicated for you. And you can practice on some paper or something if you are worried about it and if you mess up just go ahead and take it all the way to the edge it doesn't really matter you want to make sure those get really good and dry before you draw on your guidelines now this is a 16 slice stencil um, this is for sale in my Etsy shop and 
I'm just going to measure it up where I can see the notches are on an even, they have an even amount of space um, from the notch to the wood disc on all the sides. So I go um, left, right, and then top and bottom and just make sure that they are the same amount of space and then you know you've got your center. So go ahead and hold your stencil guideline down and draw your center line on. And I like to do this. This is the um, easiest way to keep your your lines um, even because I know that's that can be uh, a challenge. Again, the same thing here with the small one. It hits that very first notch, so I know that that's the center mark right there. And I know that I don't want a very large um, center dot, so I'm just going to make a little X there in the middle. So I know I've got my centers now. All right, and now I'm um, going to use Deco Art Americana, and the color is called Sea Breeze. And I'm using my green um, crochet hook bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a dot right there over top of the, uh, the guideline there. And then for the small pendant, I'm going to use my smallest blue uh, crochet hook, and I'm going to put a center dot on the small one. Now that's the same color. And you want to make sure that those get completely fully dry before you move ahead. Now you go back to your stencil and you can put it right over top of your center dot and go ahead and draw on however many guidelines that you want. I'm just going to do eight. And I'm using the um, satin violet. And that gives you a little shot of the texture there. And this is a size one. Um, nail stylus dotting tool and you just want to put a dot at the top and then at the bottom and then to the left and the right make a little crisscross and then go ahead and put a dot um, right in between each of those if you have a dot that's a little smaller and you want it to um, to be uniform with the rest of the dots go ahead and re-dip your tool and then re-dot that same dot there's nothing wrong with doing that at all and now you have eight dots around the center. Moving on, we're going to just go with the uh, uh, size five nail stylus dotting tool. And here we're using the uh, blue Target Acrylics. And we're just going to put a dot right in between on the outer edge of each of those purple dots there. And then just rotate it. And do that so you'll have eight dots in your second row. And now I'm using a size one nail stylus dotting tool and I'm going to put a very small dot right in between each of those larger blue dots because they have a little bit of a gap. Now if you want to completely skip this step you can do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I just um, wanted to fill it in a little bit. Next color is a shimmer paint, um, and I'm going back to the size 5, and I'm just going to put a dot right in between the, um, the larger blue dots there, right next to the small dots that we just did. And this is a paint called Egg. It's just a white shimmer paint. It's beautiful. I love it. And then just go ahead and do that all the way around so you're going to have eight of those. And this paint has a little bit of a different texture so I did find that I had to double dot it a few times um, there. So, And this is a size 3 nail stylus dotting tool. You could go with an even smaller size if you wanted um, or you could just completely st skip this step. That's fine. And I'm just going to put a dot right in between each of those just to fill in that space. All right, moving ahead, I am going with um, that sea breeze color that we put in the center for the center dot. And I'm just going to put a dot on each of the guidelines. So there's going to be eight in total. And I'm using um, my smallest 
uh, crochet hook. It's a dark blue in color. And then this is um, a size 2 nail stylus. And I'm just going to go back with that same blue. And um, I didn't catch the name of it. Um, you just want to put your initial first dot on the outer edge, right in the center. And then you kind of um, just go ahead and dot all the way down, hugging that dot, that uh, the larger dot. And that, that'll just help you keep all of your dots in a nice uniform shape. And the dots will just get smaller on their end. Um, and you just dot all the way down to the base. And then you re-dip your tool, re-dot your first initial dot, and then go ahead and dot all the way down the other side. All right, moving ahead here, I've got um, my smallest wooden dowel. And I'm going to go back with that same purple paint. And I'm just going to put a dot right in between each of those larger dots there, right in between. Um, the little blue uh, bridges of dots. And just go ahead and put eight dots around. Okay, and now grab your size three nail stylus. And that's just like a middle size. It's um, I got five sizes in my tool set, so that's the one that's right in the middle. And we're going back with that white egg pearl shimmer paint. And um, just going to put two dots um, on either side of the little blue bridges. So right next to each of the purple dots, go ahead and place a smaller white dot there. So there will be a total of 16 of those. And this is um, finished for this stage right now. And then we need to let that dry. So I'm going to go ahead and push that out of the way and grab the larger pendant. And we're going to do basically the same, um, the same whole operation here, um, just with some slight variances. So go ahead and grab your stencil um, or a ruler and draw you on some guidelines. And again, I'm just going to do eight. And here I'm going to take my size 2 nail stylus and going back with the purple, I'm going to do the same thing. So the top and the bottom and then the left and the right. So you'll have your little crisscross of dots. And then the only way I'm changing it here is I'm going to go and put two in between each of the um, crisscross dots here. So. So there's actually going to be a total of 12 dots around your center dot. And I just use that guideline to kind of help me to navigate and make sure I've got one dot on each side of that, that guideline that's coming out there. All right, and now this is the size five nail stylus, and you're gonna go with the blue and put a dot in between on the outer edge of each of those um, purple dots there. So all the way around. All right, and I'm going to grab my um, very smallest wooden dowel, which I like to call about a three millimeter in size. I'm not positive, but it's right around that. Um, and we're just going to put a dot with the um, egg shimmer all the way around in between each of the blue dots there. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. All right, now we'll grab your size one nail stylus, which is the very smallest one. And keeping with the egg shimmer, I'm just going to put two very small dots in between each of the larger white dots there. 
can go ahead and do that all the way around. As long as they fit, again, it's, if it's a little too tight, then you can just skip the step. Okay, and grab your green um, crochet hook, or these other crystallized crochet hooks. Um, and we're just going to do, again, it's just like we did with the small pendant. Um, this is the sea breeze color, and we're going to put one dot on each of the guidelines. So there's going to be a total of eight dots around this pattern here. This is a size two nail stylus. And again, we're just gonna walk the dots around each of those. So make your first initial dot on the center of the outer edge of the larger um, sea breeze dot. And then go ahead and just walk the dots down, hugging along the edges of the larger dot. And then re-dip your tool Redot the first initial dot and then go ahead and dot all the way down to the base of the other side. And that just kind of keeps your dots nice and uniform. Alright, and that's about how it should look at this point. Now, if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. We are not machines, we are human beings. It's going to be a little off, it's okay. All right, grab your smallest um, crochet hook. This is a dark blue color. And going back with the purple, we're gonna put a dot right in between each of those little blue bridges of dots, just like we did on the small one again. All the way around, so you're gonna have eight purple dots. All right, go ahead and grab your size two nail stylus. And sticking with the same purple color, go ahead and walk a few dots down in between if you can fit them in between each of those little blue bridges of dots towards the center. And you're going to do that all the way around. All right. And now stick with that same size too and grab your egg shimmer paint and go ahead and dot a few dots around each of those purple dots. So you just want to start on the center of the outer edge and make your first initial dot and then dot a few dots down, probably about two or three dots down, whatever you can fit. And then dot, re-dip your tool and then dot that first initial dot and then go ahead and walk them down the other side. And this is a size five nail stylus and we're just going to go ahead and put a larger dot right next to each of those purple dots. All the way around. And that's it for this section here. We're going to let these completely dry before we move on. It is important that they dry before you try to do any kind of top dots. All right, so I've let these sit for a couple hours and they are completely dry. And now it's time for some beautiful color shift paint, which I love. I think it just brings such a nice um, amount of shimmer. So we've got the um, aqua flash and the pink flash. And then um, I did want to talk about, um, so this is your uh, size three nail stylus. I want to talk about how snappy this paint is. It's got a snap back to it. And I just want to show you, um, it's easy to remove some paint. Just get you a cotton swab and dampen it and then just kind of roll the paint off and then just, just move on. So go slow with this uh, color shift paint, most metallic paints, not all, but most. But this one in particular is um, very snappy. So just go slow and go straight up and down so it has time to release and go back down to the dot. And I go ahead and put a dot on each of the larger purple dots and then I'm going to grab my size one 
and put a very teeny tiny dot around the purple dots around the center dot there. So if you um, want to skip the step, you absolutely can do that. That's just up to you. And then the same with the larger pendant. I'm going to use a size 2 and put a dot on each of the uh, purple dots around the center dot. And then grab your size 5 nail stylus and put a um, dot right in the middle of each of the purple dots on the outer edge. And then we're going to move to the aqua flash. And I'm using my smallest wooden dowel here. I'm just going to put a dot on each of the, um, the turquoise dots there. The sea breeze color. Uh, of the small pendant and then for the larger pendant we're just going to do the same process here so just stick with your, uh, your smallest wooden dowel and then go ahead and put a dot right in the center of each of those larger dots there and then you're going to let those fully dry so that's that's it for the painting part Make sure those really dry very well. And then I just grab, um, I think it's a 3 16 I can't see it now, but, um, and it's just a drill bit. So just grab your drill, and then you don't want to go too close to the edge. You don't want to go down too far. You want it kind of close to the edge, but not. If you go too close to the edge, you can just break. It'll just break. Um, and then I do try to drill the hole a little bit bigger. Um, just manually by moving the drill around um, and then the same with the smaller pendant I just use the same size and again don't go too close to the edge and then obviously don't go too close to the center so just kind of just kind of stick it right where you think um, a jump ring will go so we've got the holes and now you want to get your cording and you can just pick whatever kind of cording you like I'm gonna go with a little bit of a thicker one and then these jump rings you can buy at Hobby Lobby or uh, Michael's or any craft store. And you just want to measure it up, hold it up against your pendant, make sure that it's going to fit. And then open it up with some needle nose pliers. And then I just like to twist it a little bit. Just enough to get it to go on your pendant. And then just go ahead and stick one of the sides in, and then you're just going to rotate it through. And then I like to line them back up before I start squeezing them together. So go ahead and grab your needle nose pliers and just line them back up and then go the other way and squeeze them closed. And this may take um, a little bit. You just kind of have to keep squeezing and then turning and squeezing. <laughs> and then I give them a little bit of a twist just to get them all the way back straight. So they're good and closed. And then you pretty much can, um, you can use any kind of cording or chain that you want. Um, there are like little leather strips that already have the hardware on them or this, um, this way it's just some cording and you could use a bead you can slide a bead down on there and then um, there's lots of different ways you can you can do this but I like to put the two ends together and tie a knot that way that's how I prefer to do it, it just seems to hold a lot better rather than tying them as if you were tying a shoe and then you can push your knot up closer to the end and then just pull it nice and tight And then also um, you can purchase um, sterling silver chains like I've got here on this one 
I've got this pendant for sale in my shop and it's got a sterling silver chain on it. And I just like to put the silver chains usually on uh, my stone pendants, uh, but that's for another day. So here are the final products. So makes the perfect gift. All right, so that was my uh, wooden pendant tutorial for you. I hope you liked it. And if you did like it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And check out my channel for lots more dot art tutorials. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you would like to see in a future tutorial. And of course, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Till next time, see ya.